Okay, we've talked about mostly about series with only positive terms where we're always adding plus, plus, plus. We've seen a few geometric series examples where we can alternate plus and minus, but in general, alternating series are series that allow uh, plus and minus, right? So you alternate, um, adding and subtracting. Uh, let's just start with kind of a famous example, which is the alternating harmonic series. So if we take the, our regular harmonic series, but instead of um, just adding one plus a half plus a third and so on, we actually do one minus a half plus a third minus a quarter and so on. And so note if I write it out and claim this is the formula, uh, this would be one minus a half plus a third minus a quarter, plus a fifth, minus a sixth, and so on. And by the way, notice that I used n minus one in the exponent right here because um, we want to start positive. And if we used n and start at n equals one, then that would have been negative. Negative one to the first would have been negative. So we shift that with the minus one shifts it by one so that we're actually we plug in n equals one, we actually get zero in this exponent. So it so gives us a positive. So sometimes if you want to find the formula for general series, you have to think about considerations like that. Okay, but let's think about this. So the harmonic series, when it was all pluses, that series diverged. And it was a little bit tricky to show that it diverged. But um, so the question is, what about this one? Does this converge or diverge? And I think if we plot out, you can sort of plot out the partial sums on the number line. And I think you'll see that, um, let me just make a number line here. So this is a little bit of a different plot than what we've done before. I'm actually just plotting. Um, let's just go from zero to one. So, a way we can we can sort of visualize what's happening with this series is we can say, okay, well, the first thing we do is we add one, right? That's plus one. But then we subtract a half. So we end up at there. So we minus a half, right? Then we add a third. So we go back in the other direction that we came, plus a third right there. Oh, I can't see that. Then we do minus a quarter. We end up back over here somewhere. It's minus a quarter plus a fifth. Maybe I'll just think about it this way. Plus a fifth minus a sixth. And hopefully you sort of see what's happening here, which is that it's sort of like um, a spring or something bouncing back and forth or a pendulum or something bouncing back and forth but that has, but it's slowing down. So, you know, we end up, it end up, it ends up sort of going back and forth. And basically you're settling on some value that maybe let's just say is about right there. And so this actually pretty clearly converges, it converges to some, some value It's actually, there's a nice, it's actually a kind of a nice value, which we'll talk about right before we run out of time this semester, but converges to some value between one half and one, say. Um, and that's just because it's like, it's like, it's like sort of like dying oscillations or something like that, or dampened, basically let's say dampened oscillations. sort of thing comes up in when you do a lot of physical analysis of physical systems. Um, and so it's kind of coming to a stop and it's converging. And so this, this infinite series converges. Um, yeah, and it's called, let me just write that, it's called the alternating harmonic series. And notice this was a lot easier than 
showing that the regular harmonic series diverged, we can almost just visualize what's happening with the partial sums and realize, oh, okay, I'm adding to something that I'm subtracting less. So I go back less the way I came. Each time you sort of jump in the backwards the way you came, but it's less. So we, we can see how that's settling down and dying out. And in fact, that generalizes to something called the alternating series test. And so alternating series, it's actually quite a bit easier to tell if they converge. Um, but let me, let me state the series just to the test kind of carefully just to state it. So the alternate series test says um, that basically consider, we want a series that's alternating. So just to be sort of generic, I'll say minus one to the N times A sub N. Let's go minus sign, just write A sub N. Minus one to the N times A sub N. We can go from zero to infinity, we can go from one to infinity, whatever, I'll just say from one to infinity. Um, doesn't really matter what's your, maybe I'll actually just change it to zero. Um, so the a sub n are positive. And so this is an alternating, because we have the minus one to the n that makes the series alternate. But the a sub n can be thought of as the positive side. Like for example, above our a sub n was um, one over n, just the positive part. Okay, so if two there's two conditions, and these are conditions satisfied by the example above. Um, if uh, one um, the a sub n are dying off, are getting smaller and smaller. So the limit is zero. And two, um, each term is getting smaller than the previous term. Right, actually I should make that a strict less than. Each term is getting smaller than the previous term. So the n plus first term is less than the nth term. Because if you think about what that means is that, you know, as we alternate, it's that picture that we have above where we jump back, but we jump back less. So we add or subtract and add or subtract and each time we're going reversing direction, our partial sums are reversing directions, but going not as far in the previous direction. And so that's why you get trapped in this sort of well where it converges. So each term is getting smaller. So if these things are true, then the series converges. Then the sum converges. So that's called the alternating series test. Um, both of these are necessary. I could give you examples where, well, first off, if one doesn't hold, if this, um, if this statement doesn't hold, then in fact, the test for divergence says that the series diverges, right? Because we have to have the terms going to zero to have any chance of the series converging. So we sort of know that that this is necessary. Um, but you know, you have to say it because if it's not true, the series will diverge. So that won't, this statement won't hold. Um, this, the second piece is a little more tricky. I could give you an example where if two doesn't hold, um, then you cannot conclude the series diverges, converges, sorry, converges even if the terms are going to zero. If two doesn't hold. Um, I could do something, if I want to be a little bit tricky about it, I could do something like the following. Uh, I could do a half minus a quarter plus a third minus a ninth plus a quarter minus a sixteenth plus a fifth minus a twenty-fifth. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm actually doing like basically one over n minus one over n squared plus one six minus one over 36, et cetera. So I'm just gonna square, I'm kind of squaring each term and just subtracting off that. And this 
does not converge because we could rearrange this into um, a half plus a third plus a quarter plus so on minus a quarter plus a ninth plus a sixteenth plus so on. And we know, and this is basically the first term is the harmonic series. So that diverges. And this is the P test of P equals two converges. But if you have something infinite minus something finite, it's still infinite. So this whole thing diverges. And notice what's happening here is that the terms are not getting smaller each step. Like we actually increase from a quarter to a third, from a ninth back to a quarter, from a sixteenth back to a fifth, and so on, right? So this condition is not, doesn't hold. So you need each term to be getting smaller. If you sort of take, you know, otherwise you can sort of game, game it this way where it's like the pluses are accumulating more than the minuses are taking away. And so the thing can still crawl off to infinity. Okay, so that's the idea of the alternating series test. I'll stop there. <laughs>